All right, I got it. You ready? Oh, did you hear my kids yelling? They're making bracelets for the Taylor Swift thing tomorrow. Yeah, they're very excited. Yo, Krubies, welcome back to another episode of Crooked Tripod. I am Josh. I'm Erica. I uh, know I am Josh. I'm the same Josh as the previous one that just said that, but I don't want people to think there's two Joshes. I don't want it to get too confusing for these people, you know? Let's be real. You wanted to sing your name like I did. I did. I would not be one up, and I felt like you kind of one up to me there because I honestly forgot what kind of episode we were doing. So I like panicked last second, but then it did come out as Crooked Tripod. And on this episode of Crooked Tripod, we are talking about ranking our five top five favorite Blumhouse movies. Five. Five. Just five. We talked about doing seven, but then I think we both forgot we were going to do seven, and then we just did five anyway with some honorable mentions. So it will probably end up being seven with the honorable mentions. But to be right. honest, I don't know that my honorable mentions would have been in my top seven. I had thrown them in just to talk about them. My honorables, they would be in my top seven because, mm. I mean, it would be in the order that it's in mm -hmm. in honorable mentions then the top five so technically yes we are still doing seven quote so, unquote i technically have eight you have seven you have your top seven technically i do not i would not say this is my top seven again i just wanted to talk about the other ones to give them some love that's why i put them in the honorable mentions versus the top five however before we jump into that i am drinking a delicious Michelob Ultra. I got the tea on standby for halfway through and I need to switch over to my chamomile to get my old self tired. And then of <laughs> course the regular water here. And I have to tell you, Erica, Ooh. I started using Ooh. whitening toothpaste. Okay. Okay. And usually I use, this is the worst thing anybody can do to their teeth. I usually use sensitive toothpaste. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I've been drinking a ton of coffee and a ton of tea. So I drink coffee all morning. Mm -hmm. A ton of water, though. I'd probably drink at least a gallon and a half of water every day. But uh, So Ooh. I drink like four cups of coffee. I oh. have my Celsius before my workout at lunch because I work out at lunch every day. And okay. then I have um, tea before I go to bed. So I usually have a um, chamomile tea right before bed. But before that, uh, it's a turmeric and ginger tea. I have turmeric and ginger, then the chamomile. Anyway, I noticed, I was like, man, my teeth are looking really brown. Like what is going on? So I decided to switch to the whitening toothpaste. Okay. Mm. But whitening toothpaste makes your teeth extra sensitive. I think because of the peroxide, I don't know this for a fact. Um, you're shaking your head. Yes, you are a medical professional. I am not. I am just a bona fide idiot. And um, so for the last five days, four or five days, my teeth are so annoying. Like when I breathe, I can feel them. I'm sorry. And I feel you there because all that stuff is very staining as it is. I can totally tell from here. I'm just kidding. I really can't like at all. You don't have to lie. Do they look brown? No, they don't. Oh, okay. They don't. Um, have you ever tried the whitening strips? I was going to say, I'm doing the toothpaste. It says to do the toothpaste for four weeks. And then I was, after mm. I did that, I was going to do the whitening strips. Because what I didn't want to do is do the whitening strips on top of the, like the, the tea stains and stuff. So I'm trying to get those off and then do the whitening strips. But my coworker does the whitening strips. And he was, I was telling him about this. He was like, oh, well, if you think your teeth are sensitive now, wait till you do the whitening strips. Because he's like, my teeth hurt when I do it. Not me, him. He told me this. Uh, he's right because they work really well. I have used them twice in my life and mm -hmm. they work really, really well of getting them white and they stay white for a very long time. However, on the second time that I did it, my teeth stayed sensitive, mm. not only during the whole thing, but even after I've noticed they've stayed pretty sensitive. However, it's funny that you're doing it that way. I actually use sensitive toothpaste for a few weeks before I'm going to start the white strips on for that reason. Mm -hmm. And that does help. Mm. But yes, it will hurt. Well, my dentist <laughs> warned me a while ago because my teeth mm -hmm. are so I hate like for, I 
typically don't drink cold stuff because I don't like it. like ice cream makes my teeth hurt. Cold stuff yeah. like make it gives me a headache because makes my teeth hurt so bad. So um, my dentist told me, well, it's, you can use sensitive toothpaste, but once you start using it, it's almost impossible to stop using it because once mm. you stop using it, your teeth are extra sensitive. Not that they got more sensitive, but probably I just got so used to numbing them all the time. That makes sense. Yeah. So, but I went from using the sensitive toothpaste to now my teeth are not, doesn't, don't have any of that on them. And I'm using these, this whitening toothpaste, which makes it even worse. So it's like, Oh gosh. So I've been walking around like breathing funny. So I didn't want to breathe. I don't, I don't want air going over my teeth. <laughs> but, but it's true. Even like you said, breathing hurts. Cold is going to, anything cold is definitely going to hurt even more with the white strips and yeah. this toothpaste you're using. But, but Think of the payoff, right? I hope, I hope, <laughs> I don't know. Funny enough that you bring this up because since I've, I mean, I don't, I definitely don't drink that much coffee, but I've been drinking. So I normally drink coffee on my drive to work mm. and that's pretty much it. That's it. That And I probably need more caffeine. And that's probably why I'm always so tired. I probably need more caffeine okay. in my life. Sure. Um, but I bought an espresso machine. I don't know if I've talked about this on here, and I, I absolutely love it. You have not talked about it, but I'm interested because I have been contemplating doing this because of the teeth thing. What, buying an espresso machine? Yes, because you get all that caffeine in like one shot. So I could just hit it and quit it. You know what I mean? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I... Well, you and I know you like coffee, so I mm. I absolutely love this machine. I had put it off for a long time because I had the Keurig and I'm like, what the hell do I need an espresso machine for on top mm -hmm. of everything else? And it was when we went to Europe, the apartment we had, um, it had an espresso machine. So I was like, great, let's go ahead and use this. And it was just love at first Nespresso. Oh, yes. I like what you did there. You could be the, the marketer for the let's espresso. Go. Sponsor this, dude. I espresso. could use some sponsors. Trust me, I'm running low on on uh, funds here, people. Please sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> Please, uh, <laughs> at least send us some free coffee or some but, money. Money works too. I mean, money definitely works. But it's just I don't know how to describe. It, it just feels like an experience now. Mm -hmm. So I I use my Keurig for my coffee for work in the morning. Mm. I'm not saying it's my crappy coffee, but it's now the, you know, the lesser coffee. Sure. And then the Nespresso is for when I come home from work or after dinner. You know how I've had coffee on here at yes. night? It's the Nespresso. It's definitely on the weekend because mm. the way it brews it and it, it creates this beautiful foam oh, layer yes. on top. And then when you add your cream, because I like to add cream and oh, it's just it's so smooth mm. and delicious. See, you know, and they have a lot of flavors. You know what my problem is? Mm. Is I thoroughly enjoy the taste of straight black... Black coffee? Coffee. Some people thought I was going somewhere else with that. They were like, oh, I God. Figured. What's he going to say? Is he going to get crazy? Is he going to do it? He's gonna, He didn't do it, though. Is he going to okay. do it? Is he going to pull a Kid Rock and get real controversial on here? No, I'm not. I enjoy <laughs> very strong, straight black coffee and sometimes i don't even think i need the extra caffeine in the morning like i just like i enjoy the cup of coffee in my hand i like yeah. sipping on it while i'm working it's like soothing excuse me sorry about that um i didn't want to burp in your ear again like i did last time thank you okay people were upset thank about you. it they thought i was rude mostly my mother but she always thinks i'm rude um <laughs> So Your excuse. I'm thinking even if I had the espresso machine, because again, um, I had was listening to a podcast and somebody was talking about how because of their teeth, they switch to the espresso. They get all the caffeine just in like a boom, mm. like an espresso shot. Um, but I think I'd be sad because I legitimately like the cup of coffee in my hand. I'm drinking, I'm talking. It gives me pause. I'll be like in a meeting and somebody will say something and I'll be like, if I don't have the cup of coffee, right? Because think about it. So you say something that I have to I have to come up with a rebuttal for, right? And you, uh, I don't have the cup of coffee. Then I'm like, mm. but I got the cup. Oh shit. So I got the cup of coffee, which is not my beer can. You say something and I'm like. Right. It's like, it's part of your thinking process, right? 
Yeah, that's a good point. And so, so then I, because I never use the word but. You never say but. That's confrontational. You don't want the person across from you that you're negotiating with to ever feel like you're. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. And not only am I three times more expensive. Here's why. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't know. I think I feel like I need it. Right? It gives me that little boost of of something. So if I just hit the espresso a couple times, I I still feel like I would end up with a cup of coffee. So the thing, so I have it, the, the machine has two settings. It does have the, just the espresso shot. And Mm -hmm. I do the bigger one, Mm. the bigger dose of coffee and it makes it more of a cup of coffee. And I add the cream. So it, you know, makes it a bigger cup. Uh, so you do have the option instead of just it being a shot, but I, but then that contradicts what you're trying to do, which is just do a shot to prevent the teeth. But if you are looking for a coffee experience, which you do like, and Love I it. totally understand, mm-hmm. the Nespresso yeah. is definitely worth it. And look out for it. I would recommend like on a Black Friday or what is it? Amazon Cyber Prime Monday Day, or Prime Day, which is what, July? Sure. I believe you. Whenever that is, you know, to get a deal because, you know, got to save some save on a deal. But I get it. I I also... I mean, I don't like straight black coffee. I always like having cream in it, mm. but I do enjoy the whole coffee experience. That's why I save the Nespresso for when I'm going to sit down to enjoy it versus yeah. the routine of driving to work and drinking coffee. That's just part of the waking up. I still like the flavor, but I feel like I'm not enjoying it. I'm just like, all right, I'm getting ready for the day. Yeah. I'm in this traffic, whatever. I just mm. need this to wake up. Now it's but- part of your routine. Exactly. But the Nespresso feels like a treat, basically. I like to have it while I'm watching a show or if I'm doing the episode or my favorite is Saturday morning, waking up and just you know, drinking it in bed. I go, I wake up, I feed the cat. Meow, oh, meow, no, 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 no food, no? no drinks in the bed. Ugh. A coffee? Ugh. Yes. I don't even drink just my coffee. water. If I'm laying in bed and I wake up, I need a drink. I like lean over the bed and drink the water. I don't want the water in my bed. I have this thing. Mm. I have this thing about eating in the bed, drinking in bed. It makes me want to vomit thinking about it. And there's nothing worse than going to bed and laying down and then you're laying in something. That's never happened to me, but well, I understand. True. That's true. I that's understand. What, it's eating, thing. I do not do. But coffee is the one thing. Like I like it. It's part of the waking up on a weekend. Um, but then also again, sitting on the sofa, watching something, a show Mm. on the weekend. It's just, this is nice as a treat in my opinion. And, uh, I recommend it. So I'm hooked on espresso. I might that, you know, that the, the, the um, standard American coffee. So I've been led to believe, so we took the kids to, and then we'll hop into this episode because it's 23 minutes. We've just been talking about coffee, which is fine. Cause again, I don't really think people tune in to hear us talk about movies anyways, cause they like to hear what we're talking about, but True. Uh, we took the kids to this science museum and there was a guy there selling coffee and he had a bicycle. So his whole coffee setup was in front of him on this big stand. He had a bike. He sat on like a bicycle seat and he could pedal. And when he pedaled, that's what ground up his coffee, right? So it was hooked up to oh. the machine. So he was like making fresh coffee for people and he was doing espresso. He didn't have like a coffee. So I'm like, I just want a, a black coffee because it was like I was dragging ass. I left my coffee outside because you couldn't bring it in. Like it was a whole mm. ordeal. Um, when I'm dealing with the kids and I put the coffee in the car, I probably didn't drink it because I was talking to them while I was driving. I was talking to Abby while we were driving. So I get there, I still have my full cup of coffee in the car that I didn't get to drink and I can't bring it. So I'm so upset anyway. So I get <laughs> you in. need your caffeine. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I just want a coffee. And he's like, yeah like an American coffee. And this guy's an, an American. It's not like he was European or something. He, he was, I was like, yeah, dude, the same stuff you drink, right? Like, come on. <laughs> yes. So he's like, okay, well, I'm going to make you an Americano. And like, that is where the American style coffee that people drink today came from. You sure you don't want to try an espresso shot? I'm like, no, bro. I want a coffee that I can carry around for the next three and a half hours I'll come yeah. back and get a refill from you, bicycle man. Okay? <laughs> so he's like, well, let me tell you. So I guess the Europeans, that's what I'm told. I could be wrong. That's, in, is the, that's where the espresso thing came from. So when they came over here, mm-hmm. Americans didn't prefer their coffee that way. 
they liked it weaker. So they would add water to the espresso, mm -hmm. and that's why it's called an Americano. So the, the type of coffee that Americans drink today, and I'm assuming people in Europe and Germany and Finland and the Philippines, all over the world, South America, uh, Canada, if we want to even count those guys, because you know those Elm Street guys are real pains in the ass. I think I might have their cup right. today for my tea, a podcast on Elm Street. Here we are. Ooh. Um very nice. Everybody drinks their coffee like that, okay? So it's Americano, dude. Yeah, okay. Anyway, all it is, is he made an espresso shot and he poured hot water in it and that was my coffee. It was stronger than a normal coffee. It was really good. Um, I just, you know how I am with these pretentious things. They drive me fucking crazy. I know. I know. I will say that's interesting though and that does make sense because the coffee in Europe outside of the Nespresso machine is a lot stronger and I'm not used to it. Mm. And that's why I always have to add, I like my coffee with a little, it's a little bit lighter and that's why I like adding cream and I like sugar. It needs to be on the sweeter side mm. because I don't like that strong taste all the time. Yes. So that kind of makes sense, but. So you think the Valley bike rider coffee man was telling me the truth? He might've been, I mean, that sounds pretty legit he might be right i don't know all that kind of coffee yeah. info and then when you go to coffee shops and they have all these options and they i don't know if you've been to one where they have uh, i went to one recently where they had literally a board mm. showing like a latte americano cappuccino and it shows you the ratios of things and yes. i'm like what what does that even mean? Like a latte and a cappuccino, it really is like a millimeter difference of either foam or milk or I, yes. I don't know. Just give me the damn thing. I I'm just want you. caffeine. I'm with you, dude. And then they got like 6,000 different flavors you can get. I'm like, I just, yeah. Abby's like, Abby goes in, she gets like that. She'll be like, look at it and figure out, does she want the cappuccino or the latte? Mm -hmm. Does she want oat milk or almond milk or goat milk or cow milk or fucking <laughs> breast milk? And alien milk, alien <laughs> milk, <Breast> milk. <laughs> fucking oh, dick milk. I don't know what they're putting in these coffees. Okay. But yeah. I'm like, I just want a straight black coffee, but I don't remember what I was going to say. Now I had another story for you and I totally forgot. Oh, I do remember last one. Then I promise we'll get into the episode. Um, <laughs> we, one of, uh, we went to a resort in the keys in key Largo and in Ooh. our room, there was not a coffee machine. It drove me mm. batshit crazy, but I had to get up early because we're there. Sun Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, leave. I have work meetings Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I got to get up early other than the kids and Abby, right? So I'm like fumbling around. We were out probably drinking too much the night before. It was all like on the resort. So like we could walk to our condo yeah. and to the restaurant. Stuff. So we're out with coworkers. I'm like waking. I'm trying to be quiet. It's all like one room. Mm. And I'm like making coffees in this thing. And it's an espresso machine. I didn't realize at the time. I just thought it was the coffee thing. It was an espresso machine. So like it... Mm. <laughs> And there's like this much oh, coffee in the bottom oh, yeah. of my cup, right? So I'm like, fuck, this isn't going to do it. So I like put another thing in, right? So now I got like a cup that's this tall and it's like, yep. yeah. I'm like, ah, yeah. oh, I'm getting so mad. And Abby doesn't drink coffee, right? So I'm like, okay, so pop and do. I made six of these things in this cup and it was so strong, dude. So I walk over, it's hotter than balls out, dude. It's muggy, it's sweaty. I'm like sweating, my dress shirt's sticking to me. I get over where everybody's eating breakfast. And I have my thing there. I'm drinking. I'm like, man, I was like, did your guys coffee pots work? And they're like, you don't have a coffee pot. I'm like, yeah, I do. I was like, I just made this coffee. It took me six of those cups. And they were like, those are all espresso shots. You're drinking 32 ounces of espresso. And it was like half gone, dude. I was wired, wired dude. all day. I'm sorry. I'm not. I felt like I was drunk. I was like, whew. I bet my presentation was wild, dude. Somebody's, somebody should have recorded that presentation just to be like, what happened today? I don't know, but like I was drinking it on the way over. I mean, this coffee is really strong, but I was like, it's just because the K-Cups were only getting a little bit. It's like, because you know how if you watch your, your Keurig, like the sludge comes out first, right? All the goodness comes out first. It's like, yeah. it's real dark. And as it continues to run, it gets lighter and lighter. And at the end of it, it's just shooting water into your cup, right? I was yeah. like, oh, I'm just getting the sludge. It'll be, it'll be fine. It, it's just like, the, it's just very strong, right? Same amount of caffeine is very strong. 
But no, this thing was, I'm telling you, it was probably 24 to 32 ounces. Like this cup is probably 32 ounces. So that's a drastic overestimation of what it actually was. So it was probably here. So we'll say 16 to 20 ounces, but of just straight espresso, dude. Yeah, that's a lot. That is very strong. I don't, I wouldn't have been able to drink even a quarter of that. I liked it. It's a lot. I went for it. I, you know what? You, you did. I'm not a quitter. <laughs> I see that. I see that. Well, you could buy the Nespresso machine now and replicate that <sighs> whole situation. I again. just feel like if I do that, I'm just going to continue to drink coffee. And I'll probably and drink more. I'll drink more of it because I'll have the little espresso things. I'll have the little, the little espresso cup. <sighs> Yes. And then I'll have to make 27 of them every day. And that's way more. It would probably defeat the purpose. It's probably darker than the regular coffee. So I'd be putting more darkness on my teeth. And uh, it would actually, my teeth would go, they were getting a little brownie from the teas and the coffees to like, they'll be permanently black or they'll be falling out. Um, Yeah. We don't want that. So you know what? You just talk me into sticking with what I'm normally doing. And I'll just use the whitening strips and be painful uh, all the time. And maybe I'll lose some weight because I won't be able to eat because my teeth will hurt so bad. So a win-win, white teeth, lose weight, and and not overdrink more coffee. Mm, I don't know. I would literally take a an IV and put it directly <laughs> into my veins. I love it. If if we were out camping somewhere, let's say we decided to take the girls on an actual camping trip. Well, we go camping twice a year, but it's at like a campground. Let's say we went to one of these places where you park and you hike out into the woods and you just pick your own spot. Okay. They have a coffee maker you can use over the fire and you can do that yourself. Let's say I left mm-hmm. mine at home and it would take me 30 minutes to get somewhere to get coffee, but oh, hey, I brought the can of coffee with me. I just don't have the machine mm-hmm. to make the coffee. Could I boil the water over the fire, put the coffee grounds on a paper towel over the cup and maybe somehow come up with a contraption and pour the water over it? Sure. That sounds mm-hmm. like a lot of engineering and I do enough engineering every day that I'm camping. I'm on vacation. I don't want to have to engineer my coffee, Erica. I'm going to take true. a handful of those delicious finely ground Colombian coffee beans. Mm. I'm going to put them in my mouth and I'm going to chew them up. Okay. And I'm just going to be sitting there. Instant caffeine though. You hear it though? That's me chewing up those delicious Colombian coffee beans. Mm. And I might take a little swig of water. And there's your coffee. Coffee in the mouth. Instant (sighs) They do say that the membranes, mucous membranes, Ooh. right? That's your nose sure. and, you know, your gums and everything mm-hmm. is uh, besides maybe besides IV, it's one of the fastest routes to hence why some people will put drugs. Ah, uh, cocaine. Like, yeah, you do a little gummy. Not right? that or, I've uh, done that Chewing before. tobacco, you know, same thing. Mm. So that in your case, it would be for coffee. I mean, that's. Instant. You know what might be the way to go? Mm. Get a little Coffee paper paste. towel, okay? Get a paper towel, fold it up, okay? Fold it up like this. Put a line of a line of Coffee. Maybe like this. A line of coffee in there and then uh-huh. roll it up and just smash it down in my gums. Then all day I'll just Oh god, I'm spitting all over the camera. Did you see that? I did not. So can you imagine that. the texture of that? Oh God. I don't I know. Can't. Dude, I'm like, I Mm-mm. want a coffee right now. That's how addicted I can. I can I'd stop drinking alcohol, cold, cold Turkey. Didn't drink it for over a year. Yeah. I've never had any desire to smoke cigarettes or cigars. I think it just doesn't do anything for me. I've never been addicted to any drugs, minor or major. I don't even take Tylenol. If I get a headache, I told you last time I got a headache, I did a cold plunge and had a coffee and it went away. Um, I can quit in just about anything. The things I could not do, could not quit, coffee yep. and, and tattoos. There's no way I could go the rest of my life without getting another tattoo. But coffee or caf- well, caffeine coffee, same thing at this point, mm. is one of the, if not the top most, like everyone's addicted to it. It is mm. the number one addiction, at least in the USA. I think it's the, the most, it's the, is it the most distributed drug? Is that right? I 
Probably. And it it is the number one addiction because mm. we all crave it. And I, when we finish this episode, I will probably go make one because mm. now I want one. Also, I contemplated making one for the episode, but I ran out of time because I was just chilling on my couch. I'm like, oh, damn oh. it. I didn't oh. make one in time. You upset you had to record with me. You're like, oh, why did I agree to this again? No, I was just like, damn, I forgot mm. to make my coffee. And then I'm like, all right, maybe I'll have it after. And then I like having... um a biscotti with it oh wow you are fancy dude oh yeah sure they come pre-packaged oh my god but when you dip it in especially mm. the one i have has a uh, chocolate on it so it just melts and then when you bite it it's all, all like not mushy yeah. but not crunchy anymore oh, dude, it's, it's, it's just perfect. like this it's perfect yes oh, abby makes this wait. coffee cake that i have banned her <gasps> yep. i was telling a co-worker this today because they came out i guess with peanut butter oreos or something and oh. i was like Oreos are banned from the house because if there's Oreos in this house, I will eat every one of them. I love them. They're yeah. like crack. Somebody, I read this. I don't think I read it. It was on an episode of Rogan, uh, a, a scientist or somebody on there was saying that Oreos are as addicting as cocaine. Oh, wow. I mean, yes. I can't buy them either. I'm with you there. I can't buy Oreos or chips because uh -oh. I will eat it all mm -hmm. within a day or two. And the same thing with Oreos. I have to have my milk. I have to dip it. It has to have that right texture. And it's delicious. And you can't just have one or two. You just have to have a bunch. Yep. So I just don't buy it. Are That's you it. are you standard, regular Oreo? Or are you double stuffed? Regular. Regular all day, dude. I don't need all that extra freaking uh, no. cream. Give me just the regular. I even like... When I rip them in half, which I don't generally mm -hmm. do, if I rip them in half, I eat the side without the frosting on it first. I think it tastes first? better. Yes. Yes. 100%. <laughs> Me too. Because I love the, I love the, what is it? Marshmallow cream mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. But same thing. It's rare if I do, but if it happens to be almost coming off or it just broke off, I'm like, ooh, I'll eat this first and then. Mm. See, the cream I enjoy the standard one without the cream more than the cream. I'm like, oh, I'm going to eat this guy first. But then I have the cream, right? Sometimes the cream is too much. Here's what I found myself doing back when I was a big boy. You've seen pictures of me when I was a big fatty. Um, sometimes I would eat so many of them and I would get sick of eating them, but I still wanted mm -hmm. to eat them because they were so good. I would get to the point where I would just take, I would peel the cream off because the cream will peel off of the, the double stuff that will not peel off. The standard oh. ones, you can peel the cream off usually like, Kind of get it off oh, in, one, in one shot. And I would mm. just eat the black cookies and I wouldn't even eat the cream. Mm. Yeah, there's no, no wonder I gained like 95 pounds from senior year to 27, right? Those pictures, I I deny it. It's still not real. <laughs> it's not real. I just, it's not real. They're, they're photoshopped. I don't know. No, nah, they're real. They're painfully real, dude. They're yeah, painfully I, real. And that just it's shows funny. you the power of honesty. Because if one of my best friends had not told me I was fat, he hadn't seen me in forever. He saw me. He's like, dude, you are fat. And I was like, what? He's like, you are fat. I was like, I mean, I've gained a little weight. He's like, you gained a lot of weight. Dude. He's like, you are fat. I think he said it three times. The next day, yeah. dude, quit eating bad, got on a diet. Again, I gave up bad food. I think I eat like chicken breast and broccoli forever. Um, yeah. Nonetheless, anyway, I digress. Um, that was a good friend, by the way. I don't. He was in my wedding. We don't really talk anymore. Uh, it was one of those things. No. Like when we had kids, we, there was a handful of friends that just didn't talk to us anymore. Uh, my yeah. pet, my mom told me that had happened to them when they had kids as well. There were certain people they didn't hang out with anymore. It's just a thing, I guess. It's um, a thing. Yeah. Seth, I knew Seth before I had kids. Seth still comes around, not as much as he used to because the kids are older and he hates kids. Um, but I am also at fault because my entire tea revolves around my kids, work, and then this podcast pretty much. So outside of that, I don't do a lot. Um, I think you do a lot within that realm. So I do. I do. <laughs> that I do. I yes. mean, hold on. <laughs> Give yourself credit. You do quite a bit. Okay. I do. I'm very, I'm very like from Friday, tomorrow's Friday, right? Yeah. So it's like yeah. tomorrow work all day, daddy, daughter dance. So we'll go to mm -hmm. eat before the dance. They'll come home from school, get ready for the dance. We'll go eat, go to the dance. Saturday morning, starts basketball games at eight. Wrestling is on because they're in Australia. So Charlotte and I will come home from the game, watch that. Abby's sister and brother-in-law are coming over for dinner and game night at like four. 
wake up Sunday morning. We record for HMC Podcast. We're recording at 10, then at 12. I have Daddy Daycare, which is where me and two of my high school buddies, their families come over. We go somewhere. They're coming here for game days. So we're playing board games, Nintendo, all that stuff, up through the evening of Sunday. And then I wake up Monday for work. You see? <laughs> you know what I'm doing this weekend? Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> nothing oh yeah rec- we're recording two episodes uh, because okay oh i got stuck so we were gonna record monday night after work yeah because sunday i wasn't feeling well so i'm like all right let's do it monday i got stuck in over three hours of traffic coming home i believe it it was terrible so i'm like all right tuesday's movie night wednesday like yeah, last night i had a pharmaceutical dinner that we had to go for to uh go to for work recording tonight i'm like let's just do we'll just do double we'll do double on saturday but that's it that's the event of the weekend (laughs) so you see stroke different strokes for different folks i mean it's uh i'll probably do house stuff but that's all right funny you are very busy so i am am all the time it's like like i said if it weren't for my siri calendar i wouldn't keep any of it straight and i would never be Mm -hmm. where i need to be but fortunately she keeps me on track she's like my personal uh secretary so uh yeah so you can't say secretary anymore my god i'm gonna get blasted sorry yeah sorry assistant you're correct assistant i stand corrected funny thing last i swear this is the last one i was on a thing a, 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 a awards thing today for um work and they were giving away all these awards i didn't even need to be on it and nothing with our division or anything for us it was just like a global thing everybody got invited to and they were Mm -hmm. talking about how great this one department had done um they had like increased their margins and they had um increased their their footprint and their business and you know me being me I would attribute that to like hard work and dedication and like knowing the market and introducing new products and really getting buy-in from the market on these new products. And they're like, can we attribute this growth and this great progress to diversity? And I was oh. sitting there like, huh? <laughs> shot okay. dumb. I, I, I am one of my, I'm like, are they fucking serious right now? Like, it's not like it's a diversity, not hard work. I was like, probably uh, hard work, but we're okay. Su- we're such a European company. Diversity. Very nice. Good for them. Anyway. Good for that part of your division department. And and just for the record, all eight presenters were like white dudes in their fifties. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> diversity, bro. <laughs> nice that's the cherry on top like we are living in a cartoon yeah at least if it was diverse it would make more sense but we attribute all the success to diversity now over to you bill (laughs) from (laughs) another white guy (laughs) 55 year old man from missouri (laughs) missouri (laughs) Oh, geez. Oh, my God. I hope nobody ever Love listens it. to this that I work with. Anyway, um, 45 minutes. This is going to be a long one. You Damn, would, really? Would you like to do your um, honorable mentions? Why, yes. Wait, did we say what we're doing? I did. Luckily, luckily, I remembered this oh. time. I guess first, before you do that, was this list hard for you to come up with? I usually ask that question and I forgot. That's right. Uh, it wasn't once I saw, I literally had to Google... I Googled Bloomhouse or Blumhouse. Mm-hmm. Sorry, sure. Blumhouse. Blumhouse. I always Blumhouse. called it Bloomhouse. That's, that's okay. Do your uh, thing. Diversity. Movies. Diversity. True. Uh, I Googled Blumhouse movies because I know there's so many. I didn't realize how many. What? And it led me to their website ah. with their list in alphabetical order of all their films. And I didn't realize how many, like I said. And uh, I... I have my list here really quick and I wrote, a, you know, all the movies that I do like and then yes. I put them in order. So, no, it was not hard once I had the uh, resource. The front. resource material. So you went to the website, the Blumhouse website and, or the yeah. Bloomhouse website, depending on what part of the country you're from. And you, <laughs> um, diversity, and you um, saw the entirety of their movie list. Yes. Did it, it wasn't in- all horror. 
Okay, that's what I was going to ask, because I know they've done other movies that are not horror. So you had to sift through the entire... Are all of your movies horror that you picked? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did. Right. For the purpose of this, yes, yes. I did. Okay. But because right. um, they're... I mean, right now, I don't remember everything that was non-horror because I didn't look out for it. I know there were two movies on there for mm. sure that are non-horror that I do enjoy. That if it was an all-encompassing list, I would probably put it in there, but I just focused on all the horror movies, which are a lot. There's definitely a lot. Um, so what I did is, similar to that, I made a list of movies that I was pretty sure were Blumhouse movies um, mm. and that I liked. I enjoyed it. I knew were, that I thought were Blumhouse movies. And then yeah. I pull, I was able to find a list. I think it was on either Wikipedia or the IMDB one is outdated. It only goes up to Halloween ends. It doesn't have like Megan Ooh. or any of the new ones. Yeah. Night Swim. <sighs> Excuse me. Oof. Um, I mm -mm. found uh, the other, it might have been Rotten Tomatoes. I think Rotten Tomatoes had an updated list. So that, that was the one, and it was just horror, so I had to sift through all the other garbage. So then I went through their list, which was like 91 or 97 movies that are just horror. And yeah. um, every one on my list is one I had written down prior to seeing the list. Nothing changed uh, my mind. Okay. Uh, after seeing the list. So it wasn't anything that I was like, oh, that's a Blumhouse movie. I like it more than this. And I even had to, because so I talk all this shit about Blumhouse. You know this. And I say good things about them, but I also say some pretty bad things. Like they make a lot of bad movies. Yeah. And cause remember, you never say, but it's combative. They make, they put out a lot really? of bad movies and they give a lot of directors um, a lot of opportunity to make their own movie throughout their own vision a la Rob Zombie's Lords of Salem. Um, mm -hmm. that I movie, did see that there. That movie probably would have never been made if it weren't for Blumhouse just giving Rob the money and saying, hey, go and do whatever you want to do. Just don't ask for more money. Um, in natural <laughs> Rob Zombie fashion, he goes back and asks for more money because that's just who Rob Zombie is. Uh, he likes to push the envelope. Nonetheless, I think that while I had thought Blumhouse, and I still believe this, put out a lot of bad movies, the, the movies I had listed, which were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, mm. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 movies I had listed out, most of them, all of them, most of them, are a three and a half or higher. Okay. So for That's me decent. to do my top five, I actually had quite a few that were the same rating. So I had to pick which one I liked more mm. to put them into the top five. So maybe a little bit challenging. Um, yes, because there were so many, I think it was a little challenging. It would have been easier for me to have done a top 10. Cause I think I could have nailed that pretty easily. That's why I love top five. It's harder. Yeah. It's much harder. It's a little bit more challenging, but yeah, it, like I said, it wasn't, Hard once I realized how many movies and how many movies I do enjoy mm -hmm. from Blumhouse that it was pretty easy to piece it together. I didn't cross anything out. Like I literally, like I said, wrote out the ones that I liked on the bottom and then I just put them in, in like a puzzle. Mm, a puzzle. A jigsaw puzzle. puzzle, one might say. Get it? Not a Blumhouse movie, but I believe it's an Atomic Monster movie, which now they're one and the same. They are. Look at that. That's why I was shocked that Insidious is a Blumhouse movie because it is directed by James Wan, mm. but that confused me. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I knew I was it was Blumhouse and I am assuming it's on your list. I thought I knew what your, I know what your number, I think I know what your number one is going to be. Mm. Would you like to predict it now? Nope. Or when we get there? When we get there, that way I have at least, if I'm wrong and it's earlier, then I will know. Then I'll switch it to something okay. else and not tell you. Because that's the kind of person I am. I will cheat my 10-year-old daughter at a game of Uno <laughs> oh my God. just to win. I've caught her trying to cheat me at Clue. She's <gasps> learned from the best. Was it the butler? It was the butler. The butler is not an option. You clearly don't play very much Clue. But we were playing yeah. Harry Potter Clue, and the rooms changed mm. just like the castle, the Hogwarts. It's, it's, nice. it's at the Hogwarts castle. So if you roll a Death Eater sign, um, you spin these dials, and it moves the room. So some rooms get closed, oh. and if you're in the room when it closes, you're stuck in that room unless you have a card that can get you out of it. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. She tried to cheat me in Harry Potter Clue. Severus Snape is not a character. He's an attribute you can get, which is great. Mm. But 
Moving That's on. That's a shame. Um, yes. I'll tell you what. I have three honorable mentions. So is it okay if I go first to knock one out? By all means. Okay. I've already talked about it. So my one of my honorable mentions is Lords of Salem. Um, it's my okay. lowest rated Rob Zombie movie. I think I gave it a three and a half on Letterboxd. So it didn't okay. make that. I couldn't. I really, really wanted to put it in my top five. And here's why it did not make the cut. One, it did not have a higher rating than the ones that are in my top five. So I didn't feel it would be fair for me to do that, even though I was still going to do it. And then I looked at the list and I'm like, okay, what am I going to take out to put this in? Because in normal Josh fashion, had I put Lords of Salem into my top five, I would have mm-hmm. automatically moved it to number one just to be an internet troll and see how many people I could piss off by doing that. So I thought it's immediately going to be a three and a half and jump above things that are higher rated than it. So I didn't feel okay right. about that, but I was still willing to do it for the greater good of Rob Zombie fandom. Then I looked at the list. I was like, hey, what am I going to take out to put it in? And I was and? like, I don't really want to take anything out. Mm. So then I, the ultimate decision came down to this. I said, if I had one time to watch a movie, I have one time. I don't know why I said. If I had time to watch one movie, mm-hmm. would I watch one of these movies on this list, or would I watch Lords of Salem? And I could not favorably pick Lords of Salem over any of my top five if that were the case. So it did not make my top five. I love the movie. Um, It's got a lot of um, interesting stylistic choices. I love Sherry Moon, and I think it's her best acting role in any of his movies. Um, It's directed really well. He, again, in normal Rob Zombie fashion, ran out of money, so the ending is really weird. I feel like if he had Mm. ended it differently, um, it would have been received better. I probably would have liked it more, but the ending is just so, like out there and you can tell I can't even do the normal thing I do where I defend him even if sometimes I uh, disagree with some of his stylish choice I can defend what he was going for or yeah. what I think he was going for like well yeah this but I've, like it or hate it this is what he was going for and that's what he shot with this I literally think legitimately he didn't have any money and had to put it in together and that's what we got and I think mm. it ruined the film I just talked about this longer than I'm probably going to talk about movies on my list so I got it in. I cheated. I got it in without it even being in the top five. Honorable mention one is Lords of Salem. Excellent. I haven't seen it. So. Oh. And I have heard that, that it's not, it's one of his least well liked, like it's not as liked as anything else and that it is weird. Mm. But that it, that actually makes me more curious. So. It's, um. It's probably as close as you're going to get to elevated horror with a Rob Zombie movie. I think mm. you would like Lord Lords of Salem. Um, Does it have to do with witches? Yes. Just based. Oh, yes. Okay. It's about the Salem witch trials. So it's okay. about, yeah, it's, I don't want to ruin anything for it. It's It's really, really the, the idea is awesome. The mm-hmm. acting in it is really good. Um, again, like I said, it's just the ending of it. And if there okay. had, if he just would have managed his money better, Unlike ninety percent of Americans, um, <laughs> maybe he could have shot a dead different ending to it. I I cannot thoroughly believe that that's the ending he wanted for that movie, but it's the ending that we got. And um, yeah, if you haven't, it's on. I think it's on my Voodoo account. If you ever want to watch it, I think you would. I think you would enjoy it. To be honest, okay, I'll have to check it out. Maybe I will this weekend, since you know I have no real plans. <laughs> There you go. Well, you you have the login, so it's yours. And I just bought all of the How to Train Your Dragon movies as well, if you'd like to watch <gasps> any of those. I do, actually. I've always wanted to watch those, and I just never got around to oh. it. And I've heard they are great. Dude, they're so good. They're probably my favorite kids' movies now. I've heard that. I've heard that it's a lot of people's favorites, that it's really well done. So, okay, great. It's excellent. Great. Excellent. Charlotte had great. the flu Thursday through yesterday. So oh. all weekend, like Sunday... Abby had to take Lucy out to do Girl Scout stuff. Uh, I stayed home with Charlotte. We binged How to Train Your Dragon, and we were like, oh, I mean, the second one, the second one's rough, dude. It's like, oh! I turned oh, no, it got you. Oh, it did. Damn it. it Girl did. dad. I'm it telling got you. No, no. Okay, move on. What is your honorable mention? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. My first honorable mention is 
No surprise, it is found footage and it is creep. Don't mm. know if you've ever watched. Well, I, I know you're not a found footage fan, but this one is one of those realistic horror movies where this could happen to somebody. It probably has happened to people. And the main character is literally very creepy. Okay. And so many red flags as to like, like, why did the main character continue with this other main villain? Like, mm. you just don't understand why you would stick around. Yeah. You kind of asked for it, but it's really well done. And it's one of those found footage that people know mm. about, but don't know about if you're into found footage. And once people watch it and realize how creepy it is, and it has that whole, you know, me, that voyeurism Oof. and looking into people's houses, being watched. It, it has that big time, and uh, I think it has a great payoff at the end. It's a really good, uh, mm. scary movie. Good found footage. Creep. Creep. I saw and that I on the list. Know. You huh? did not. You did not know it was a Blumhouse movie. Had no idea this mm. whole time. Interesting. Actually, uh, everything on this list I did not know was Blumhouse. Okay, well that's fair. So there we go. Interesting. Better for me. I saw Creep and Creep 2 on the list. Uh, I didn't know they were found footage. I've never seen them, so I cannot comment. But um, I knowing that it's found footage not makes sense that it's on your list. And that's not the end of it. <laughs> ah, bum, bum, bum. Bum, well, bum, bum. My second honorable mention, like I said, I have three technically, but I'm going to lump these two together and make it easy. It is Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. Not on my top five. I enjoy both of these movies very much. For instance, just to show you how high my top five movies are rated, Halloween Ends and Halloween Kills, I both rated fours on Letterboxd. Ooh, so my top five, top five are movies that I really that I really enjoyed. Lord of Salem mm -hmm. is three and a half. Kills, Ends, fours. So the movies that are on my list are higher rated than those. Um, but I just, like again, I wanted to put them in here. Then I thought about cheating and making my... Uh, spot Halloween trilogy because it's all three of them and really they're one cohesive storyline when you think about it. Love them or hate them. Um, sure. But yeah. I, I couldn't I couldn't put them on the list. That actually gives away one of my picks but um, I couldn't put them on the list so they are honorable mentions and I think the more people watch them and as those movies age and I've been on record saying this multiple times I think they will uh, be better received as they age as opposed to uh Currently, I think even right now, because they've aged a little bit, at least Halloween Kills, um, yeah. people are coming around on it and liking it more than when they initially saw it from that shock value they got from both of those. So Halloween Ends, Halloween Kills are uh, my last two honorable mentions. I had a feeling it was going to be one of the Halloweens bundled together because you mentioned earlier mm. uh, in text that you bundled something. I'm like, oh, it's going to be Halloween because I also... Didn't know it was Blumhouse when I looked through the list. I saw all the Halloweens. I'm like, oh, oh, this is making the list. I know this is making his list somewhere. Yes. So. Well, and again, I, I was like, man, I'm going to go all three Halloweens and Lords of Salem. That's four. I was like, I can't do that. Not in good conscience. Okay. Well, it makes me curious as to your top five now. Hmm. Okay. My next honorable mention or the last honorable mention I have is Ouija or Ouija Origin of Evil, mm. the Mike Flanagan one, which at the time that I watched this movie, I did not know it was a Mike Flanagan film because also at the time that I was watching that, while yes, I'm I mean, I've always been a horror fan. I wasn't. It's funny how podcasting, I don't know if this has happened to you, has made you more critical and it's made you pay more attention to directors and styles and things like that so now i'm like oh <laughs> i see you i see you and uh i know for horror cafe we're gonna do this movie later this year so i'm really excited to revisit this movie but i remember watching ouija and thinking well this movie sucked mm. so when this movie came out i i thought this was great it yeah. was really well done it was scary and the ending is what I remember liking a lot because it's not an ending I was expecting and in that it's spoiler alert. You've seen it, right? I have seen it. Yes. Okay. Spoiler for anybody else, but like it's, it's a, 
a bad ending in the sense it's not a happy ending. And I like those a lot in horror. And I just didn't expect it in this movie, I remember thinking. And uh, it's just a really good, scary, ghost, kind of possession-y movie again. It's just really good. And I can't wait to revisit. Didn't know it was Blumhouse yet again. And it's Mike Flanagan. There you go. Mike Flanagan. It's Mike Flanagan. He would have been higher, but everything in my top five is just... You'll see. They're going to be like, yeah, okay, of course you picked this. Of course you picked it. Right. (laughs) So... I didn't know when I watched it that it was a Mike Flanagan movie either because um, mm. it was a sequel. It was a pre, is it a prequel or a sequel? It doesn't matter. It's the second yeah. Luigi movie and the first one was terrible. So I was like, oh, okay, I'll give this one yes. a shot. And it was much better. That's usually not the case. Usually the second movies are mm-hmm. worse than the first. Um, right. But again, and it had all the Mike Flanagan actors in it as well. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. no, I enjoyed it. Uh, and it was uh, definitely odd because it was so much better than the first one. Agree. It's, what is it? A requel? Like a... No, that's not the word, right? Because it was a requel is remake sequel. No, never mind. I think Scream right? 5 is a requel, right? Because they're rebooting yeah. the franchise. It's a sequel. Yeah, wrong, wrong term. I'm sure there's a term for this because it's a prequel, but it's a sequel. It's I don't know. Sorry. What's your number five? My number five. Are you ready? <laughs> yes. No, my number five is happy death day i did see that on there and i'm like he's gonna pick this somewhere love it dude modern day slasher they put in some time travel with it what i really like about i like the character of tree she's the main character at first you Mm -hmm. hate her so much and then they do a good job of making you feel bad for her so you like relate to her and what she's going through which i like the character turn i think it's hard to do that especially in a slasher movie to add that kind of element to it where usually it's just you are want these characters to either get cut up or you want them to survive. With her at first, you're like, man, I really hope she gets killed. And then as the more you watch it, you relate to her and you feel bad for her. And they actually have you rooting for her by the end of it. And they mm-hmm. take her from almost the villain of the story and make her the heroine of the story. Um, and again, I love slasher movies. And I think it's hard for a modern day slasher to really do anything that hasn't already been done and separate itself from everything else. Um, yeah. Which is funny because one, two, three, four, Four of my top five are slasher movies, not to give too much away. But, um, and they're all unique in what they bring to the table. So the first one for me is Happy Death Day. Uh, the sequel, I did not really care for. It got way too sci-fi for me. I really like the first one. And I think that even had me guessing up until the end who the killer was. Um, and when it's revealed, it's like, ah, it makes perfect sense. Sort of like at the end of Scream 5 when I should have known the entire time who it was, but I was trying to outsmart them and then they outsmarted me by making it so obvious. My number five, Happy Death Day. Sorry. It is a good one. I haven't watched that in a long time but i remember the same thing i wasn't rooting for her then you like her i like the groundhog day mm-hmm. aspect of waking up agree that the second one was like it didn't even feel like a horror movie to be no. honest it just felt like a weird sci-fi thriller yeah. but that is a fun one that's a fun i would say that's also a fun party movie yes i, I agree i think it would be that could be fun for that sure could be fun for Good sure pick thank Good you pick thank you uh all right my number five let's see if you saw this movie on the list did you think this was going to make my top five it is again because we just did a list last week the visit (laughs) yes one because i know you like this movie two it's found footage of course (laughs) i (laughs) all right so i don't know in what order you're releasing these episodes so i'm sorry if you're hearing this again because i put this on a list that we did last week Mm -hmm. or whenever that one came out. But what list was that? Anyway, the the visit is, I'm going to say it's my favorite M night Shyamalan movie. It's funny, scary, unpredictable. I love the twist on it. The kid, the particularly the, the boy, the brother is the star of this movie because of how funny he is. But vulnerable at the same time at certain parts of the movie and then you like i said you have moments of like oh my god this is so scary and then you have him being funny or even the diaper scene where it's shockingly funny but it's not that funny yes it's funny let's be honest it's funny it is funny but it's just 
And the way they used found footage in this is not annoying. It's not overly shaky, I thought. So it's not too bad in that aspect. I guess that's a good thing to point out in these uh, found footage. Like Creep is a little bit shaky, but um, not as bad as like a Blair Witch. But the visit is pretty because it's usually on a laptop or on a mm. tripod. So it's not too nausea inducing. But right. the visit Absolutely great. I've revisited ha, this movie a bunch of times. Ba -da -bum. And uh, I recommend it. The beautiful, visit. Beautiful. Number five. The list was PG 13 movies that you had Thank to visit. Thank you. I'm like, what the hell did we do this for? What did we, we do? We do so many lists. <laughs> we do. We do a lot of lists around here. It's crazy. Yeah, we do. We're constantly going to the horror movie grocery store. We're constantly making lists. But we are. All right. My number four, and probably no surprise, is. Sinister. Really? It is. I really enjoy this movie. Uh, we did it very early on, I think, in the podcast. Maybe not, because we lived here when, when we did that movie, and we had already done the podcast for at least a year before we moved here. Nonetheless, I don't know why I'm telling you this. I like this movie. <laughs> Ethan Hawke is phenomenal, and I think Ethan Hawke is a drastically yes. underrated actor. Um, I think Agreed. he can play a plethora of roles and do them all very well, do them all individually, and, and, and he's a very good character actor to where you feel for the character but in this particular movie he drove me bonkers because he mm -hmm. made bad decisions he was disconnected but i think he did a great job of bringing that character to life because while you think he's like oh i want to take care of my family the more the movie goes on and you see the decisions that he makes he doesn't tell them what's going on even though he knows what's going on. he purposely moves them to this house and doesn't tell them and then he has that scene and for me the best part of that movie is that scene in the bedroom between him and his wife where he essentially He's watching that tape of him on that interview. And that's when for you as the viewer, maybe I think I, I didn't answer your question earlier. Yes. Doing this podcast since we started has made me extremely critical and catch on to things in movies that I typically wouldn't have caught on mm -hmm. to when I back when I was just a casual viewer of these. Not that I'm like somebody you should listen to or take my opinion into great account. However, you do notice these things because we watch so many of them. And that scene, you see him watching that. Um, interview of himself back when he had that hit book that he cannot ever live up to again. And he essentially tells his wife in that moment that like the, the family doesn't matter to him. Nothing matters except getting back to that place that he was once in. And it's a really great comparison to drug. How success is mm -hmm. a really, it's really comparative to drugs and how uh, people that are addicted to drugs, I've never talked to these people, but I've like listened to interviews and podcasts with people that are much smarter than me that deal with addiction, is that you're always chasing that high that you got the first time. Like Once you get that first initial high, it's almost impossible to repeat it, and that's why people overdose, because they continually do more and more and more and more and more, and they can never relive that. They're always chasing the dragon. Right? They can never get back to that. And that is throughout that movie, you understand and you realize that he is chasing it, but only through the success of that original book, that novel, he cannot recreate. And he's willing to do anything, even put his family in harm's way, knowing that what is going on in this house is actually happening. Maybe he didn't believe it at first, but he's there and is experiencing it and still doesn't make them leave. Um, yeah. And to your point, um, well, I typically don't like unhappy endings. I like a happy ending at the end of my story. I'm a crybaby. I like to be like, "Oh, this is a great." I want to. I want to. <laughs> I want a happy cry at the end of my movies. Yeah. Um, this is not one that you'll be doing that in mm -hmm. um, because it is also not a happy ending. Uh, I'm assuming this is on your list. I probably just over talked the movie way too much. It didn't leave you any space, which is not a good co-host of me because I'm assuming this is on your list and you're going to want to also talk about it. So I will shut up. I hope I didn't steal the thunder for sinister, which is my number four pick. I'll comment on it. Okay. You usually, Later. and I know you do this for me as well. If I know, or I'm pretty certain you're going to also have a movie. I try not to over talk about the movie. Like I just did a terrible <laughs> example of doing, um, because I definitely, um, railroaded that one and I'm sorry I shouldn't have done that so I hope you're not upset with me it's on your list that's that's the point you're supposed to go off the rail and then I'll go off on a different rail that's yeah speaking I'm of, glad you like this movie speaking of drugs and rails and all that yes we can go off on different rails <laughs> right. but nonetheless right. sorry sorry but so glad you like this movie I will I like I said 
I will comment later. Mm -hmm. Uh, All right. Great job. Number four for me, more found footage incoming. Here we go. Here we go. Unfriended. Ah, okay. Okay. All right. I did not know this was a Blumhouse movie. I watched this in theater back when this came out because I had to go see it. I saw a trailer. I'm like, I have to see this movie. And it is. It it is such a great. Have you seen this movie? I have never seen it, but I did listen to uh, Homies of Horror because I was renovating one of our rooms. And when I go into renovation mode, that's all I want to do is listen to podcasts. And Mm. they did an episode on it. So I know the premise of the movie and I'm pretty sure I remember what happens at the end, but um, I've not seen it. Or I will probably never watch it. So go ahead. Okay. So it has things that I really like, which are found footage, but it has what's called the screen life. So it's taking place on a computer. The Mm. whole movie is a computer. Mm. You are a teenage female. Uh, That's the main character you're sitting looking as. And it is just a huge commentary on the use of technology, the power of technology how scary it is, right? So it's tech horror, which is something I also very much enjoy. And the power of social media and the influence of just teenagers and how bad everybody is to each other, especially at that age where, honestly, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters at 18, 17, but it feels like it does. Mm -hmm. And it's just, at the end, it's these group of friends. I think it was five friends, and they were just so terrible to each other at the end that you're like, oh my God, you all deserve to die, honestly. And for it being literally a screen the whole time, I think it's very well done in conveying, especially you being the main character, just in how she's typing and like even watching her text message, you could see her contemplating because you would delete, you would see the little bubbles. Like it was the first movie I think I watched like this, the screen life version of found footage and i i just thought it was really creepy and again it combines paranormal with Mm. tech horror and uh found footage all in one and it has an unhappy ending which is up my alley and i've watched this several times i like it every time and it's just creepy because that technology is old it's much more advanced now so it'd be interesting for people to remake movies like that with modern technology and see what else you can do. I think mm. like movies like Searching and Missing, those are, those are thrillers, but it's kind of the same thing using technology. But yeah. uh, I really liked it, like this movie clearly because it's number four. And I don't think people talk about it too much. But again, you have to be into this kind of subject matter. But yes, number four, Unfriended. What was the one that came out during the pandemic that everybody was obsessed with? Again, oh, host. 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 I would say host. And again, I have not seen Unfriended, but I would say host is the modern day version of Unfriended, right? There we go. Yes. And that yeah. one, that the, the only difference is that one, the, the friends don't, I don't remember them turning too much on each other. They're also more adults versus mm. literally teenagers. Yeah. And, but that one was next level scary like i re- that movie was really scary this one it was but i agree that one's the modern version of unfriended and unfriended's not that old i think it's 2016 in the grand scheme it's not with tech with tech though tech advances it is. so rapidly that yeah that that tech from 2016 we wouldn't even use it back in 2016 we probably didn't have carplay probably not and i think actually they were using skype in in unfriended and like nobody uses skype anymore it's either teams or zoom Zoom. you know it's it's that's what i'm saying it's in tech world like you said it's drastic it's like a hundred years have gone by microsoft purchased skype i think and Mm. while skype is still around i think skype became teams became what's like the business version of skype Mm. i think you can still use skype i don't know um, but I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, we used it at work and then it switched because Microsoft owned it. I thought mm-hmm. Skype and then, but nonetheless, I don't know. I think that's what happened. I wouldn't doubt it at this point. So, well, you don't have to yell about it. Okay. Calm down. Calm down. You're being too loud. Okay. Listen, <sighs> listen, number three, three, go. Number three is the movie Freaky. I did not see that on there. If, if I would have seen that, I'm like, oh, yes, he would definitely choose this, too. I have not watched it, so I am i don't know, but I know you've mentioned it, so. 
Well, just so you know, Lords of Salem, all the Halloween movies, Freaky, Sinister, Happy Death Day, are on my Vudu account if you'd like to watch them. Great to know, because I would like to watch Freaky, because you said it's like a Happy Death Day. Very much. As Vince Vaughn, I love Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, for a very long time, was my favorite actor. Abby and I went every year to see his new movie, because he was releasing comedies every year in theaters. We would go see them every year. He kind of got in bad with a couple DUIs. Maybe he was blackballed from from movies for a while he came back this is the perfect role for him it's he does a great job in it um it really reverses the role of these series again it adds something different to the slasher genre which is hard to do and the fact that these two basically switch by so basically which is funny because happy death day takes groundhog's day and makes it a horror movie freaky takes the movie somewhat the premise of freaky friday the Got it. movie and makes it into a slasher horror movie. But again, it's Ooh. funny. It's really interesting. Uh, the killer becomes a teenage girl and has embedded himself in this friend group. And the Vince Vaughn is now the teenage girl that's trying to tell her friends, Hey, that is not me. That is this C- Haddonfield. I'm joking. That's from Halloween, but this Haddonfield serial yeah. killer. I am the girl and it's Vince Vaughn doing this. And he is hilarious. Oh, um, but okay. you would think that it would be a comedy, but the kills are so brutal in this movie. And then it's the girl doing it. And I would like to give her a shout out. I don't even have my phone on me. I'm so terrible anymore. My friends hate me. because like, you never text us back. Mom's like, I text you all the time and you never get back to me. Dad says you don't ever answer my calls. I'm like, I don't have my phone guys. It's sitting on the ledge um, ah. upstairs. I'm trying to get away from all this technology. I know it, the, the world is, is fighting against me but I'm trying to get away from it because I think it's going to ruin our society. You've heard me talk about this. I don't need to go into it. I'm trying to buy time while I'm looking this up, Erica. I'm sorry. That's okay. I do think that technology is going to ruin the world and be the end of humanity. Uh, Catherine Newton plays Millie um, in Freaky. If you have not seen this, dude, it's good. Trust me. You should watch it. It's on my Vudu account. It's actually a bundle pack I bought. It's Happy Death Day, Happy Death Day 2, and Freaky are all in the same bundle on there when you go Makes sense. in there. Freaky, my number three. She's in that new uh, Lisa Frankenstein movie. Really? That's that's why she looks so familiar. I'm like, why does this girl look so familiar? She's the main girl in that one. I don't know if it did well, but it came out already. FYI. FYI. What do I know her from? Because we, uh, oh, she is. She's Lisa. Yeah, yeah. So it might be. I mean, that that is a comedy as well. Uh, Lisa Frankenstein. So I don't know how it did. Nobody said anything. The internet did not give an opinion. Well, interesting. I think everybody, especially in our group right now, um, she's in Paranormal Activity Four, by the way. Um, I did see that. Yep. And I, th- we knew her. Abby and I knew her from um, the movie Blockers with John Cena. It's a comedy. If you have not mm. seen that movie, you should definitely watch that movie because you will piss your pants laughing. There's a certain butt chugging scene that. Oh jeez. <laughs> it doesn't matter what kind of mood Abby and I are in. If that scene is on, we both are crying laughing. It's so funny. Anyway, um, oh, our group. I think our entire group yeah. is like so out of connection with horror movies right now. It's really weird. Um, it is. Most of us are reading a lot. I think you've been gaming quite a bit. Um, yes. I think Mark has too, but I think Mark and Brooke and Tawny, uh, Felicia has been on a cruise or something, but mm-hmm. I don't know if it's that we're out of touch with horror movies or maybe we overdid it last year. The horror was so good last year or there's just nothing out to watch, but I haven't heard anything about this Lisa Frankenstein movie. There's this new imaginary movie that's supposed to be coming out. It's a Blumhouse movie that nobody's talking about. Like, yeah, I don't know if we're just like what's going on, but it's a little weird. It is dude. It really is. I, I'm trying to work on this 52 horror movies. Yes. I got one. I got one in. You got one. I'm hold on. Hold on. I can't buy time as much as as good as you, but hold on. Let me check my list. Hold on. Oh, I'd be uh, got to be honest with you though. It's a good thing I can't actually monetarily buy time because I would buy so much of it. I have 5. I have 5 so far. Mm-hmm. Now we have to catch up. Right now it's 8 weeks, so I still need 3 more to officially catch up. But I mean, obviously they're not new horror movies, but That's okay. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Even the one uh, I watched two horror movies this weekend. Uh, I watched Suitable Flesh that came out last year. I thought that Mm -hmm. movie was awful. 
I gotta be honest. And then I watched an old uh, The Slumber Party Massacre because I'd never watched that it, it 80s was classic. Terrible, wasn't it? Um, huh? It was terrible, wasn't it? It was bad, but I had fun with it. At least I had fun with it. It wasn't like uh, suitable flesh that I'm like, when is this shit over? Like, yeah. please end immediately. So I don't know. I it's been it's 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 a little tough. Well, let me year. ask you this because I think I may be. I don't know if this is cheating or not. So I know that I watched Scream Six right before we recorded the Stabbies. Yeah. Remember, because I watched it and I was like, "Oh, mm -hmm. I texted you guys like the week before," and I was like, "This totally solidified all of my picks that I made for Scream Six because this movie is a banger." So I feel like that yeah. should, that counts. I I watched it in January. I'm, it I, does. I, I mean. I, we, we we said we would count whatever we watch, right? Yes. I can't remember. Lucy and I watched Godzilla <laughs> and Godzilla versus Kong. But I can't remember if we watched it during Christmas break mm. or if we watched it during New Year's break. I'm pretty sure it was during New Year's break. Um, But I, I don't know. I think you and I made a text about it. So I wonder if I can go back in our uh, text thread and look and see when I was texting you about it. Or maybe it was the group even around that time period because I can go back to the date and see because that would be two more. So really one, two, three, four. <laughs> I could be up to five right now. You could. Technically, right, I, I am not counting the horror movies I watch for the podcast. I don't know if you are because I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't associate it the same as just watching a horror movie versus, I'm not saying this is work, but mm. for the podcast so it's work i am watching it's work. you can be honest it's work it is i mean it is work um so i'm not counting technically i am watching something weekly but i don't count the podcast movies oh i'm counting them i have to or i'm never gonna make it yeah i know you have to i have to i need a life raft <laughs> here come on throw like, you a put some floaties a on Put some floaties on. You can blow the left one up. I'll blow the right one up. And then I can just be out there yeah. treading, treading water. Okay. I need these. I need these podcast movies. You can't take them away from me. Yes. Okay. For you. All right. Perfect. perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I think I'm up to five. Are we number then. three? Uh, yeah. You are on your number three. My number three was freaky. Okay. My number three is Insidious. Okay. No surprise there. If you know... Any of us by now, if you've been listening all this time, Insidious is obviously going to be on this list. I've talked about this movie, I don't know how many times on this show. I love it. It was also on my PG-13 movie list. It's a great ghost story movie. That old lady freaks me out every time. The scene in the house when they're on, I keep, the further is mm. always the scariest parts of the movie for me. I like Patrick Wilson in this movie. And um, the relationship with the kid. I, it's just a great ghost story. All it needed was... Actually, it does have an unhappy ending as well. We have a, a trend here. That's except true. Except for the visit. The visit is good. But I don't know. I just don't want to keep... I've talked about it so much that I feel like I've run out of mm. how to express how much I enjoy this movie. But it is one of those ghost movies that I... We'll come back to like The Conjuring. Like if The Conjuring was a Blumhouse movie, you bet this would be probably number one. It would be on my list for sure. I think I've rated it. Would it. Be I rated on my it, list. it would. It would be. It would probably be number one for mine as well. If The Conjuring was on, yeah. was a Blumhouse movie. You know, these are these good ghost movies, and I love my ghost paranormal stories. And this one, you know, just it's a winner. It Chicken dinner. What can I say? A winner. This two episode lists in a row. You have had the visit and Insidious. I know. When I wrote it down, I'm like, oh my god, these two movies again. I mean, it is what it is. It it just solidifies how much mm -hmm. I love these two movies. Yeah, I would say so. I would say if anybody questions your love of Insidious or the visit, they could be directed to multiple episodes of which you talk about them endlessly. And the woman in black. <laughs> And the woman in black, yes. I mean, you, you, good lord, you love these movies, and we just continuously come up with lists that they fit in too. So, listen, like you, if you can find a list and put a scream movie or Halloween, and you're going to do it. It's going to be the same for me with these variety of movies. Yeah, of course, they're your favorite for a reason. So that they are that they are. <gasps> What's We're your number two? To two, my number two is Halloween 2018. 
Ooh, I thought that would be number one. Okay. I, I could see why you, I got the, well, it's not the Halloween 18 mask, but it's the, I'm never good at this. There we go on YouTube, which it I forgot hard. to post the last video on YouTube. I got to fix it. Anyway, um, I love this movie. I think they did a great job. They brought back Jamie Lee Curtis, even though, you know, I'm not a big fan of Jamie Lee Curtis, that Laurie Strode character, and they made her, in my opinion, likable. Because I never liked that character in Halloween 1 and 2. I actually, she annoys the shit out of me, and I would argue all day long that Jamie Lee Curtis is bad in those movies. She is great in Halloween. They make her likable. They make her the Sarah Connor character from like Terminator. Mm -hmm. I love Judy Greer, and I love that Judy Greer's in this movie. Um, I think it's hilarious that she wears a Christmas sweater the whole time, and it's a Halloween movie. So it's funny. I like the character. I even liked her daughter, Allison. Or her, it's her daughter, Jamie Lee Curtis' granddaughter, Allison. Right, yeah. I like how they end up at that house. I just think they did a lot of things right in that movie. Um, and it was the way they set the groundwork for, they added the technology of, oh, well, we have these podcasters that are coming in and they trigger mm -hmm. Michael with the mask. I thought they did a lot of things really good with that movie, um, including making the Laurie Strode character likable, which in, I it rarely, if ever, say anything nice about Jamie Lee Curtis, but I think she did a great job. I also think she's great in Halloween H2O, but um, the trauma you see in this character based on how those two nights in her life altered the rest of her life from the relationships that she has with her family moving forward and how she is basically live. She isn't living a life, right? She's just, he's, even yeah. though he's been in this Haddonfield hospital this entire time, he has still been haunting her from there. And I feel like he knows he's doing it. Like, I think that those, that trilogy does a great job of showing how, it's an evil entity. And like Michael Myers is a product of Haddonfield and Haddonfield is the evil entity. He is just a piece of it. Right. Which is why, what they try to do with that Corey uh, character in the third one, which I'm not going to talk mm. about, but they did a lot of great things in Halloween 2018. So um, I really enjoyed it when it came out. I was really excited for, to see where they took the trilogy. Like I said, I think that the trilogy will continue to get more favorable reviews as it ages. I think people just had sticker shock initially because I don't think they understood what they were getting, even though Blumhouse and the whole David Gordon Green and the crew said, hey, these movies are going to be controversial and there's going to be a lot of people that don't like the direction we're taking this. They were pretty all spot on with it, um, but they told you up front that you probably weren't going to like it and you didn't like hey. it and then you still got mad. They warned you. They that did. was pretty nice. Because they don't have to. It makes me wonder if we weren't dealing with this pandemic bullshit and the movie didn't get pushed back and they didn't have to do reshoots mm. and they, Jamie Lee Curtis in normal Jamie Lee Curtis fashion, tried to make a big political scene out of something that would, had already been recorded before the pandemic. The pandemic wasn't even a thing when this thing was recorded. And she's like, oh, we really took that into consideration during these mob scenes and mob mentality and how it's really something that's impacting the world right now. And I'm like, you shot it before that thing existed. <laughs> oh, she's such a terrible human being. Anyway, I digress. Number two. Halloween. Halloween. That was number one. Yes, yes. So now you thought it was number one. Do you know what my number one is? Maybe. Okay, interesting. We'll see when we get there. You still have to do your number two. Let's not jump the gun. Let's not put the cart in front of the horse. My number two is Sinister. Mm. Everything you said, I agree. Ethan Hawke is severely underrated, and I really like that he's in this horror realm. I'm here for it. I love it. I also think he's weirdly hot, so I'm definitely here for it okay you know i always gotta add that in sure but i do he is he's not somebody you root for because he is so selfish in this movie yes a hundred percent selfish but this movie scared me so much like it had everything scares me let i'll be honest but this took it to that these next two movies are movies that scared me that i actually had trouble sleeping, scared, and uh, getting up to go to the bathroom at night. I'm like, eh, something there. Is Bagul mm. going to be there? Like, what I is mean, it? Maybe. I mean, so I when this movie came out, this was a, if I remember correctly, it was a sleeper movie. It came out. Nobody said anything about it. It wasn't a, real, a big deal when it came out, and I never got to see it in theater, which I very much regret. 
this in theater must be amazing because of all the music, the sound design of this movie, the certain jump scares in this movie and the loudness yep. must must have been insane in the theater. But I like that you don't see Bagul very often. That's what I didn't like about part two. Part two is awful. It's amazing how just awful part two is right. compared to this. Because just the hint of him is enough. The The snuff films are disturbing, but it's just him. It was just when you finally see him. I'll never forget when you see him in the pool. Yes. Scene is when they finally reveal him. I literally was yelling at the screen, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Is that thing walking? Is yeah. it a man? Like, what is, is that? It was just so terrifying. And the... Ethan Hawke's character of just persisting on watching these things and continuing to dive into this with no regard to the damage it's doing to his family, to himself. But it's also the human curiosity because I think that's a thing. I think once you, a rabbit hole, right? Yeah. When you start with one thing on YouTube, you're like, hmm, this is interesting. Let me go watch the next recommended film of the same thing and watch it over and over until you just have watched 20 YouTube uh videos of the same information i think that's what that's feeding into that we just can't let it, things go and he's on another level because he's egotistical mm -hmm. selfish guy but very scary movie i have also watched this probably too many times and it's scary each time each time i find something new to examine look at something i didn't notice uh I, and i love the ending because it is definitely not a happy ending. I did not see that coming at all. Right. And uh, this is a great, and I didn't know it was Blumhouse. So I was like, <laughs> oh my God, number two. <laughs> Sinister. The, the only qualm I have with this movie, and I think I watched it with Seth. Seth and I watched it. Um, I don't know if it was for the podcast or if we had watched it previously, but it's like, turn on a light, guy. Like, oh my the, God. The power's not out. Like, turn on a light. I do remember thinking that too. I go, why is it always dark in this house? Come on, bro. Turn on, turn on the light. I would. I do. <laughs> yeah. That's what, it's the first thing you do. You flip on the light. You see everything. He just like walks through the hallway, looks outside, goes to the kitchen. It's like, turn a light on, dude. Like, Come this on, would man. have been so much easier if you just turn a light on. But I get it. Then we wouldn't have a movie, right? In, indeed. Indeed. So there it is. Okay. There was my sinister rant. So. You did a great job. I didn't leave you much room, to, and you you totally went in there and, and made it your own. So great job. Very impressed. Thoroughly impressed. Anytime. Anytime. Yes, All yes. right. My number Do one. It. Are you ready? Do you think you know what it is? Do you think you have a guess? Maybe. Is it Megan? No. Sick? No. Oh, okay. Then no, I don't know. Was, sick a, was sick a Blumhouse movie? Oh, pe Yeah. I wrote it down. Interesting. I didn't even know that. It didn't. It wouldn't have changed anything. But uh, well, mm -hmm. maybe it would have. Probably not. Anyway, my <laughs> number one is the movie Hush by Mike Flanagan. Wow, that surprises really? you. Y yeah. Interesting. Why? I forgot about this movie. How did you forget about it? It was on the list. I know, but honestly, I have to revisit this movie. When I watched it, I liked it, and then. Mm -hmm. A like kind of the at the, towards the end. No, the end is so good. So that's why I'm saying I have to rewatch this. Plus, it's my Flanagan, so that can't be that can't be real. Like what I thought. Oh, dude, it's so good. Like the amount of yeah. homework that Mike Flanagan and Kate Se Siegel. I always get her and Kate Seagal. What is it? Seigel? Kate Seigel, Kate Siegel. I always get her and Kate. Seagal mixed up. Kay Seagal is from Peg Bundy from, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 the show, the Bundys, uh, Oh, um, married with children. Yes. From married with children. She's also <laughs> Gemma from sons of anarchy. She is Kurt Sutter's mm -hmm. wife from that. So I, but Kate Siegel is Mike Flanagan's wife. She plays right. the main character. Mm -hmm. Matt. Is it Maddie? Is that her name in this? Look it up. She what? does a great the the whole being deaf, deaf right? Yeah, she's deaf in the is is very terrifying. 
Um, wow, it's from yeah, 2016. Maddie. Holy crap. Yeah. Maddie. Yeah. So her name's Maddie. Anyway, she, dude, she is so good in this. And it would, like, I like to go out to cabin. This is crazy to me mm-hmm. how this cabin is set up and this the fact that she's deaf. And then it plays, it's got a great storyline. But the again, it adds something different. Mike Flanagan and Kate Siegel did a great job of incorporating how much different and how more difficult it would be if you were deaf when you're put in, because in, in all honesty, it's a pretty straightforward slasher movie. Mm-hmm. She's in the woods by herself. She's a writer. She's moved out of the city because of a breakup and she wants to be on her own. She writes novels and she's working on her next novel, um, which will probably be a success. Unlike Ethan Hawke's novel in Sinister. Um, <laughs> right. And then this guy randomly shows up in a mask with a bow and arrow, a, a crossbow, and he is trying to kill her. But, it's so much different than every other slasher movie because in other slasher movies, they can hear. So they can hear if the person is moving outside. She cannot. Um, You see the guy behind her in the door. You see him in the windows. He's watching her. He's in the house with her at one point, walking around the house, and she has no idea he's there. But she flips it. She starts using all of these things that would be a hindrance to normal people to her advantage. So the flashing lights... Um, she uses the, the, the wasp spray. She uses a bunch of deterrents to trick him into going different directions. And long story short, um, I just really like the movie. I think that the homework they did, the writing of it is all done really well. And I have said this on this podcast multiple times for one actor, it shows how good an actor is whenever it's just basically them with little to no dialogue, which she has little to, she doesn't even talk. She's, she can't talk, right? She does right. some sign language and does mm-hmm. some texting and right. So with no dialogue in this movie, um, and it's captivating. Her performance is captivating and you are interested in what she's doing and you buy in, mostly you buy in and want her to survive because you're like, okay, not only is it messed up that she's a woman alone in the woods by herself and this guy is doing this, she's deaf on top of it. Yeah. And what's also cool is he doesn't even know she's deaf at first. He figures it That's out true. later. So he is attacking her as if she's a, and she's doing fairly well. And then he figures out that she's deaf. Yeah. I do remember that. I have to rewatch this. You may need to add that to the weekend too. Oh, dude, sure. it's so good. It's one I could watch yeah. over and over and over again and never get sick yeah. of. Maybe I'll watch it this weekend for my list because I love that movie. Um, it's Mike Flanagan. My best friend's wife hates horror movies. She cannot watch them. They freak her out. He and her were watching. He talked her into watching this movie. I think Seth was actually over there with them, uh, oh and God. they were watching this movie. And my friend goes out their back door. He had to go to the bathroom. He's like, I'm going to go to the bathroom. But he goes out the back door and runs around the house and bangs in the front window and she lost her shit. I, I wasn't there, but they tell that they, they like to tell this story. Right. Um, and that's my hush story, but I was a sleeper on this movie. I only know about this movie because it was on Netflix. It was on Netflix yeah. and it, like it popped up and they had the mask. I was like, dude, I'll watch this movie. This looks like something I'd be into. And then I watched it and I was like, Oh, this is Mike Flanagan. The guy that made that terrible Oculus movie. Maybe I ought to give him a better, a second chance. Yeah. I think it was pretty much, uh, the his yeah it probably would have been his second movie after oculus now that you mentioned it and that's how i found it too was through netflix i remember that the image of the mask and the mask is pretty scary mm-hmm. um i did read buzz around it at the time when it dropped on netflix i'm like oh okay i'll but again i didn't realize it was mike flanagan because he was newer at the time and mm-hmm. it's just it's evolved right the fandom and the yeah. horror viewing has evolved. That's what I'm saying. I'm a different horror fan now. So That's I need okay. to rewatch it. That's okay. I know Oculus was like a short film or a YouTube video or something that he had did. I don't think YouTube yeah. was even around then, but I think it was like a short story or a short, mm-hmm. a short. They got turned into a movie. I, I just wasn't into it. I didn't like it the first time I watched it. I actually fell asleep. Abby and I were watching it at our first house and uh, I woke up later. I was like, what happened? And she told me what happened. I was like, that movie sucked. So then I rewatched it for another podcast. I was a guest on, I think. And I equally liked it less. I liked it. Is that the right? I liked it less than I did Mm. the first time. Um, but I was thinking I'd like it more because I like Mike Flanagan so much, but yeah, hush was a different monster. And, but again, I think it just goes to his level of directing and the level of detail, which he puts into his movie. So number one for me is the movie hush by Mike Flanagan. Very nice. Very nice. Yes. I also like that it is an original work of his because what we've seen recently, 
I think maybe even everything after this movie has been a retelling of an existing story. Is that right? Because, I mean, he did the yeah. uh, Doctor Sleep. That's Stephen King book. He yep. did uh, Haunting a Hill House, which is a book. Bly Manor yep. is The Turning of the Screw, which is a book. Yep. Um, the, and The Fall of the House of Usher. That, yes, which I think he adapted those to that. So I'll give him it's more loosely. credit for that because it wasn't yeah. just the novel he was recreating. Um, what's the island one where they're out in the middle of nowhere? Uh, Midnight Mass is a book. Midnight Mass and uh, Midnight Club. I don't know if that's adapted from anything. I think it is. I'm pretty sure okay. that it is, but um, not sure. So, yeah. It is crazy, though, that he ended that series with, to my, in my opinion, he was going to make more of those because it ended mm -hmm. to where they could make more. I'm assuming it got canceled or maybe he just didn't want to do it. But uh, hmm. it'll be interesting to see what he does on Prime. I'm, I'm here for it. I can't wait to see what he does. Me too. Do you know what my number one is? I think I know what it is. I thought I knew what it was from the beginning, and I'm pretty sure uh, you have not picked it yet, so I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Well? I think it's Paranormal Activity. <gasps> you win! Yes. yes! And the crowd yes. goes wild. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> oh, my God. Of course, of, of course, found footage would be, would be number one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... Uh, ghost slash possession. You can kind of put the, it's kind of more possession demon ish thing. So you've seen this one. I have. Okay. So watch this in theater. I definitely watch this in theater. This is the movie like sinister, but this one, I mean, I was younger, so even more impressionable at the time, but I, I had trouble sleeping. I will admit for a whole week after I watched this movie. That's a long time. It is a long time. Uh, there, I mean, there are much scarier movies at this point. When I rewatch this movie, it is still scary to me. It's not as as the first time, but that experience with it, I and to this day, I do not look at Katie, the main character, possessed girl. I don't look at her face at the end when she <laughs> comes up to the camera. I think I've mentioned this before, but. I won't look at it because I'm very visual. Like I said, yeah. the the insidious lady freaks me out in the veil. Like those are things that get me with horror movies. If there's something very visual, it'll literally stay stamped in my brain and I'll get scared. And then that's when getting up to go to the bathroom at night, I'm like, oh, shit, yes. is this thing going to be there? Like what? And I know, you know, it's logically not going to be there. But this movie unnerved me. I... I love the slow burn of this. This is up my alley of it's just this gradual build of something is going on here and don't mess with shit because the boyfriend is the one who messed with it. He was so irritating. And it's like, I mean, honestly, it was unavoidable now that you know the lore. Like, right. I think it was unavoidable, but the boyfriend just made it so much worse. And it's always my thing. Like, don't mess with this stuff. Don't get a Ouija board. Don't don't do it. Just leave it alone. Just leave right? it be. Let it let well enough alone. Just leave it. Mm -hmm. Just leave it. And I don't know. It's just I the beginning of found footage revolution for me is with this movie. As much as I enjoy Blair Witch, yeah, and it's one of the originals of that genre. I personally think, and it's it might be written somewhere out there. Paranormal Activity is the one that shot this up. Yeah, the whole found footage and I will also always love paranormal activity for that reason that this movie is the reason why I enjoy this genre so much kind of like what you were saying I can relate in a way I'm very much addicted to this where I'm always looking for the next found footage that's going to get me mm. all like oh this is so exciting right and I have found ones as we go through the years because they improve on it or they'll do something different when it's when it's hard to kind of like with slashers. How do you reinvent something to be different? Right. And it's usually a story or how you do your jump scares. But this is OG for me. I still watch this every now and then. And I space it out on purpose so that I don't remember every detail. So when I go back to it, it's like, oh, my God, this is why I like this movie so much. I forgot about this scene. Right. Or, oh, I didn't realize her voice changed in this scene. <laughs> like, oh shit, it's this is even scarier now. It's right. just 
it's still a very fun watch and i still get scared obviously not as much as the beginning mm -hmm. this is one of my favorite horror movies that really impacted me and this is why we love horror get scared that it is um i was i didn't want to think i was texting while you were talking about your number one movie i just want to pull up my letterbox because i distinctly remember hating this movie um, i can see that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gave it hey one and a half. Um, oh no, I my forget, little found footage heart. <laughs> I forget why we uh, why we did this movie, but um, you gave it a four. I yeah, I gave it a uh, I gave it a one and a half. Brooke from Elm Street gave it a two. Mark gave it a four. But uh, we did it. I don't I'm trying to remember when it was, but long yeah, time ago. I remember not liking it when it came out. I here's the mm. thing for me, it drives me absolutely bonkers okay it drives me bat shit crazy and again i know you love this movie so i'm sorry i don't want to shit all over you. i i do this to jess all the time she brings a movie and we watch it and then i shit on it for two hours and i'm trying so hard to not be that guy but i'll say one thing and then i'm done the, the thing stupidity no your stupidity drives me crazy but i can overlook it if it if it is a good movie I can't stand it when there's a 90 or a two 90 minute or two hour movie that leads up to one thing. Mm. Blair Witch did it. It was the yeah. scene in the basement with the guy standing in a corner and it cut. You see right. it, it cuts away. It was scary. It, it was terrifying the first time you see it. Yeah. Then you tell your friends this movie's. Oh my God, this movie's so scary. It's mm -hmm. there's just stuff going on and. The whole time they're watching it, they're like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? And then you get to that scene, like, there it is. And they're like, dude, we yeah. spent 90 minutes to get to this point in this movie where this man, they walk down these steps, there's these tribal signs on the wall, and this guy's standing in the corner with his back to you. That's what you just had me do, Josh. Yes. So I feel like with paranormal activity, that's how I feel about it because I feel like the whole thing leads up to that three minutes at the end of the movie where she gets drugged down the hallway and then walks back in and you see her face and it's yeah. like, oh, that's that's what we're doing here. And that's what I, I like. I don't... It's fair. It's fair. I, I do like it. So that's... It's funny how our lists always, right? It's when we... Especially when it's movies like this and not a specific... Uh, a franchise or anything. Mm-hmm. We you always have more of the slasher. I always have the ghost. So it's like a we balance it out, right? Because yes. I can see why you don't like this movie, and then those are all the reasons why I do like this movie. Mm. Well, so. and the fact also that you believe in this stuff, like I do not at yeah. all. Right. Believe in this. I believe in all of it because I obviously believe in creepy ass people that could definitely be outside my window well, right I, now. I believe that. Like, so <laughs> right. mine is rooted much more in, in reality. <laughs> no, not even because I mean, is it really realistic that Michael Myers is going to well, be able to do these things or that like no. these kids in Scream are really going to be able to kill all these people and get away with it as easily as they do? But mine is rooted. Wow, I said rooted weird. Mine is rooted, rooted. in <laughs> evil humans. Mm -hmm. That is what scares me because I think, and again, maybe it is because it seems more realistic to me that this crazy person, and even more so to in today's world, yeah, that people are evil. Not everybody, but there, everybody has a little bit of evil in them. I'm certain of it. But like that, what scares me and what I. See see in horror that I really like is when it is a human even though Michael and again is not necessarily human. like the the devil's rejects those people are all human those could be people that you're mm -hmm. in a Walmart with at some point right like that is what scares me that is what I like to watch that's what intrigues me and like the psyche of all of it and how they're written and how they're acted and how they take this this despicable character or this really um odd character or this really menacing character and then they pair it up with a final girl or a final guy that has like the opposite traits generally of that person and how those characters interact or how they trick each other in certain situations and then there's always the whodunit aspect of it um, that I like as well but back long ass story short back to your comparison yes I it's our versions of horror are grounded on different 
things mm-hmm. that scare us. Yours are the ghosts, the the, the yeah. found footage, which could be some conceived as somewhat realistic because it's a handheld camera and you're seeing these things through the lens of somebody else who's seeing it firsthand. Um, but ultimately, generally, there's some sort of evil entity or evil spirit mm-hmm. versus me where it's like, oh, people suck and people will do these terrible things to each other and I'm going to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. But they are... But your list is still... Because I still find all of that because st- uh, stalker um, slashers have a stalking element to them that that's what I find scary in those movies or any of those based on realistic what could happen. It could happen in a very extreme situation yeah. or just it can versus a ghost, right? Or a demon. But those movies, I probably also stray away from them because since they are more probable, I'm like, mm. Let me not make myself more paranoid and more freaked out versus a ghost where I'm like, yeah, I do believe in this, but I mean, hopefully, please don't start haunting me now. Please don't haunt me, you know, like. Right. So it's but I I like it. It's I like the fantasy, the quote unquote fantasy of it Mm -hmm. not being 100 percent real. So you still have that glass of like no unreality. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but. Well, yeah, it's, There's it's, less reality. It's close enough that it could be real, but it's fantasy enough that it's probably unlikely, but maybe it could be. Which right. is probably why you enjoy watching them like, versus like Abby. Abby will not watch found footage or found footage. Jesus. She will not watch <laughs> home invasion movies because mm-hmm. they scare her and she doesn't like to watch them. They're too realistic. And that that's yeah. like her thing that scares the shit out of her. She, so like if it's a home invasion horror movie, she just won't watch it because it literally scares her and that is something that's very realistic that that could happen it could so, happen but i would that's scary you know so but yes Any, good guess thank you i knew you would guess it very good you good great job ah uh, thank you thank you i tried little clap little clap for a little man alpha male alpha, alpha male, male don't energy. forget don't forget the alpha male of course <laughs> in normal fashion i did not have the patrons pulled up i'm sorry but erica is there anything else you would like to say before we wrap it up uh i do not but this list was fun it was and it came out of nowhere yeah good job you're the one who came up with this list again did i really yeah you're like let's do top blumhouse movies i'm like okay great Oh, beautiful. I'll take it, dude. I'll take it. I like it. I think it ended up it ended up well. But we would like to thank all of the patrons that give us their hard earned money to listen to us rate Blumhouse movies, talk about PG thirteen movies. Uh HMC Podcast will be back in studio next week. No, uh maybe before this one even comes out. So maybe you will act, yeah, it'll be before this one. I think because I'm doing a cocktails episode with uh Extreme Horror Replay. To help them promote their um, their awards episode, so I think I'm doing that Tuesday, uh, and that'll be out the next week uh, when their thing comes out. Holy cow! I got a lot going on, dude. That is fun. So likely that episode will already have been out. The breakdown episode the HMC podcast is doing with a Kurt Russell movie uh, breakdown, which I had never seen. Pretty good. Seth picked it. Uh, not really. It's from the '90s. Some at some point, no one really my kind of movie, but it was better than I thought it was going to be. Um, nice. So all that we're in the future right now. So all that likely has already been released or I just gave everybody a huge spoiler alert and that stuff hadn't even dropped yet. Cause we've got quite a few in the can anyway. Anyway, thank you to hey, Russ H, Aaron P, Colette S, Matt B, Zach F, Rosalind, Vicky D, Brian Hathwith, the Noakle Out There podcast, Kimberly D, Mike R, I'm naming people that have already left because I didn't in, in, institute the active members. So, you know what? All those people that gave up on us, they got free shout outs. So, let's start over. Russ H., Aaron P., Zach F., Brian Hathaway of the North Out There Podcast, Kimberly D., Felicia Connor Two Chicks and a Horror Flick, Caitlin, Ashley V., Mark and Brooke from Podcast on Elm Street, and a podcast on Fury Road, and my lovely mother, Nana Stevie Nicks. Hi, Stevie Nicks. I hope all those people that I named um, that are no longer active members and are are still on here, though, as Deadbeats. Mm. I'm just kidding. Come back? 
I'm just kidding. Maybe you're going through hard financial times. I get it. It's tough for everybody. But thank you for at one point being a Kirby. We really do appreciate it. Hopefully you enjoyed all that gear you got. You're still wearing it, telling all your friends about it. Woo-hoo. Or you can come back. Or come back. There's a lot of cool stuff coming out. I can't tell you about it right now because I'd be lying to you if I knew what it was, but I bet it's going to be sweet when it happens. That's all I'm saying. You bet. Yes. <laughs> In that case, we're out of here. Bye. 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 Uh, sound like a burp. It did. It Yuck. did. It wasn't, though, just so you know. It wasn't. It was a good touch, though. <laughs>